So hello and welcome to the Faculty of Sciences uh, Honours Information Session for 2019. Uh, some of you probably know me, those of you who don't, I'm uh, Greg Metha from the Department of Chemistry and at the moment I'm, I'm just here representing the Faculty of S Science um, and you'll see a few other academics around the place as well. And as you all know, and the reason why we're all here is because we all are, everyone here loves science and we're all a bit nerdy and that's all, we're all cool with that. Um, so the way this session is going to work today is I'm going to give a brief overview about what, what honours is. You may have some preconceived ideas about that. Um, then we're going to have a short presentation from somebody who's recently completed their honours degree. Then we're going to have a short Q&A session and then we're going to break off into discipline or major specific areas. Um, and that's where you're going to get your free lunch and drinks as well. So I don't know how many of you came just for the free pizza. So let's get a make, make a start. So honours. I think you're all aware that it's an additional year on top of your undergraduate, but the absolute fun thing about it is that you get to delve into your subject area of interest into much greater depth. And you all know when you start off at first year, you have to do four courses every semester, then it sort of got honed down to three and to two, and you just find that you like studying a particular area in, in greater depth than in another area. So with honours exclusively in a particular area, you will be able to focus all of your attentions. So everybody enjoys it, certainly from that perspective. Along with that, you start to develop some new skills that haven't necessarily been addressed as part of your current undergraduate degree. So we're developing now advanced research skills but also importantly, we're developing what we call professional skills or enterprise skills or soft skills. These are skills that maybe you've done, um, you've worked with, with others in a group, maybe you've given a presentation. It's these sorts of additional skills that we're finding are being increasingly sought after and demanded by potential employees. So I'm, sh employers, sorry. So I know that we're, all of you are keen to get a job at the end of your degree. We're not like arts graduates where we just do this for fun. We want to get, well, this is being recorded too, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> we, all want, we all want to be able to use our skills that we've learnt, part of our undergraduate degree, to go out and improve the world and make some sort of contribution to it. And in order to that, you need to be employed. What we know are that employers are increasingly more interested in these professional type skills and exactly it's these sorts of skills that really come to the fore as part of an honours degree. In addition, gaining competitive advantage. We just crunched some numbers yesterday. I was a bit surprised. So there's, how many responded? 120 or something? 30? Might be a bit less than that here now. Last year, Almost 500 students graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree of some form yesterday. Uh, yes, last year. About 25% of those are doing honours this year. So as soon as you sign up for honours, it sets you apart from the rest of the pack. So it gives, makes you distinctive compared to uh, for a potential employer. So good preparation uh, for employment and your career. And it's also the pathway in, if you're interested in going into higher degree studies, whether it be masters or PhD. So let's look more specifically at what those skills are that employers are after. So this is now getting quite old. Unfortunately, it hasn't been updated, but it comes from the Chief Scientist of Australia office where they asked employers what sort of skills do they want to see in the graduates. And this is all in STEM-based science, technology, engineering and maths uh, type, type fields. You can see active learning, critical thinking, complex problem solving, interpersonal skills, understanding how we do business. Now, if you look at the bar graph, you can see that these skills are demanded uh, or uh, given very important or important priority. And then the one with the red asterisk there is your specific discipline or vocational skill. So whether that be in biology or chemistry or physics. Now it's still high, it's still highly regarded and we're not going to send you out into the world without decent discipline um, depth and skills, but it's these other skills that employees are increasingly 
asking uh, our graduates to come away with. So top employable skills, I've already said, active learning, critical thinking, creative complex problem solving and interpersonal skills. These are the skills that you get in spades as part of an honours degree. You talk to any recent honours graduate or anyone, anyone who's done honours and they'll tell you this is exactly what you'll learn. And I'm sure that's what we'll hear from our speaker in a few moments time. So what sort of honours pathways exist? Traditionally, there was just one pathway which was dominated in a particular discipline area. Now, there's the creation of a new pathway which we call professional honours, where it emphasises more of those professional skills and puts the research project in a particular discipline area, sort of makes that not quite, so to, the, not quite to the forefront. So two pathways, disciplinary research and professional skills and that's just been offered for the first time this, this year. So in terms of how these are constructed, they're a bit different. If I start with the professional honours that you see on one side there, there's coursework and there's some interesting courses that have just been developed. Um, let me just give you the, the name of three of these courses. You're all familiar with the fact that that's three units, so these are three unit courses that are comprising of it. So professional communication, preparing for professional practice, and emerging issues in science and society. These are the three um, core courseworks that make up that professional honours stream. In addition, there's elective coursework and there's a research project because honours does always involve some form of research and I'll talk a bit more about that in a few slides time. In terms of the traditional research honours program, it depends on which discipline area you do it in there's usually some coursework, and that coursework can vary between either six units up to 12 units. And the, the rest of your time then is dedicated to your research project. So a bit of a difference in deciding whether you want to do a research-based honours or a professional type of honours. So if we look at the research pathway, here you see a range of disciplines that we offer them. The full spread of science is on offer, and these are all terms that you're familiar with. Agricultural science, sciences, viticulture, wine science, nutrition, horticulture, animal science, environmental science, biomedical science, chemistry, geology, physics. All things that you are going to be ending up getting a major in. So in terms of what you'd expect then, is you'd expect that your research project is going to be focused in one of those areas you are going to be coupled with one of the excellent academics that the University of Adelaide is renowned for. You become part of somebody's research group and you're in that fold and that's where you develop those professional skills, working with a world leading expert in that particular area. You'll do research. You'll generate data that nobody else has ever generated before. It's a, quite a buzz, I can tell you. You learn to analyse that data. You learn how to write it up, how to consider that, and how to develop that into a paper that goes out there, gets peer reviewed and published with your name on the front. So these, this pathway develops skills to better prepare you for your chosen discipline. So you go into further depth than what you've already got um, with your current degree structure. What about professional pathway? The skills focused there are the skills that I've already mentioned before. Communication, education, looking at science innovation, policy and project management. These are the types of areas that are available for you to do your project in. What you can expect is a greater focus on developing those professional skills, consolidate again critical thinking, problem solving and developing, developing those interpersonal skills. And by building those broader professional skills, you make yourself vastly more employable than somebody else who hasn't got that particular honours degree. Finally, everyone's interested in a bit of money. There are scholarships available to do honours. There's a whole raft of them. There's a web page there, link there that you can look at. They're available ranging from, you know, something to give you, buy you a nice little laptop, ranging up to something uh, a, a bit larger. There are both internal within the university and also external scholarships. And I um, implore you to, to have a look at this, these websites to see if there are any 
suitable scholarships that might be uh, that might be applicable to you. So visit the Science Scholarships website for more details. Okay, I want to now introduce a uh, recent honours graduate, Catherine Hill, who's now undertaking her. Um, PhD, and she's just going to give you, I think, a, a flavour of what honours is all about from her own personal perspective. So please welcome Catherine. So, yeah, hi everyone, I'm Catherine. Yeah, I just finished a research honours just last year, so I'm only a few months out from it. Um, and when I was at the stage you guys are at now, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. So I'd finished my Bachelor of Science, where I'd started in chemistry, physics and maths but I finished in ecology and evolutionary biology. <laughs> I didn't have that specific focus on a discipline that you would probably think you would need for an honours, as we're talking about. Um, but it was actually a discussion with a lecturer that I knew quite well that made me realise I really wanted to do honours. Uh, so there was actually a project available that combined pretty well all the subjects I did in undergraduate and made that my indecisiveness on deciding on a subject suddenly my strength. So the project I did was I developed a forensic technique to trace the origins of animals in illegal wildlife trade. So I got to combine chemistry and a bit of maths and apply it to an animal perspective. And so I looked at an exotic species of turtle which people are illegally smuggling into Australia to keep as pets, but then release into the wild when they don't want them anymore. And what we wanted to know is if we found one of those turtles out in the wild, was it just a recently dumped pet? or is it actually breeding in the wild and we might have a new pest that we need to sort of get onto and control as soon as possible. So I used stable isotopes to do this and I also used a bit of machine learning to look at it, which was very cool. And now I'm in the process of writing it up as a paper to pass on my work to people like Primary Industries to actually use this tool. And so it's really cool that I'm already seeing a real world impact on the research that I finished only a few months ago. So the best part of my honours year was definitely the transition of being just another university student into actually being a member of the academic community in the university. So even though my experiences in ecology will probably be very different to those of you doing, say, physics or chemistry, I found that this was a very common experience across all the different schools. So my supervisor gave me full control of my project, which you will likely as well. Um, and he explained that after a few months' time, I will be the only one that knows about this project really, as in I, I will know the most out of anyone. I will be the expert on this project and that was really cool but really daunting. <laughs> um, going into it, it was very much I was my own boss. My supervisor was there to help me with any questions, give me the guidance I need. But in terms of doing the work, I was given a question to answer, go and answer it. So there was a lot of temptation of maybe working from home one day and then maybe working at home for the week and then keeps going like that. But getting over that temptation and treating it as you're essentially going into the beginning of employment in an honours. Um, setting up a daily work routine at uni at your own desk, which you'll get. Um, and learning self-organisation was definitely one of the most important skills that I learned throughout my honours year. And so doing honours figured out what I wanted to do, uh, but it also opened up a great deal more opportunities than just finishing a bachelor degree did. So honours built on the skills and knowledge that I learnt during my undergraduate, uh, but honours also gave me the confidence to use these skills and articulate to employers why I'm a good employee. Uh, it was actually that that made me have the confidence to say, yeah, I am a scientist now. So. Um, no matter what you go on to, if you go into employment or further research, uh, honours is a really useful stepping stone into getting you into a great, well-rounded scientist. So while your honours experience might be very different to mine, uh, it's incredibly rewarding and I would definitely recommend it to everyone. Uh, it'll let you put the skills you've been learning all this time into action. And so I would definitely recommend start talking to your lecturers now, learning about what projects are out there, seeing if there's any that motivate you and I hope to see a lot of you in the scientific community next year. Thanks very much, Catherine. Now, I can assure you that the pizzas haven't arrived yet, so we've actually got some time for some questions. Now, this is being recorded, so we'd like to um, get those questions um, recorded as, uh, 
as well. So we've got a couple of roaming mics that will go around. So I also have some people from faculty office who are here to help questions. So if you want to ask any sort of general question about honours, now is an opportunity to do so. If you've got a discipline specific question that you have, I would uh, suggest that you wait until we do our little breakout sessions. Um, and then you can ask a discipline specific question to the relevant academic. So does anyone have any general questions about what honours entails? Got a question there. Just in case you guys need to answer. Oh, I was wondering, with honours, do you follow a similar schedule to, say, an undergraduate where you have like six weeks of working and then you have a break in between and then like you basically work in terms as we do now or is it its own schedule? All right, so the honours is an entire year. So you, like all Australian workers, you're entitled to four weeks holiday a year. Um, I think most people get so excited with their project that they tend not to take that. But it's certainly not broken down in, into two semesters. In terms of when the coursework runs for, that I put up earlier, it would depend on when those courses run. And different discipline areas would run them at different times. So in the professional honours, I know that some of those courses run in semester one and semester two. Some run over the entire semester. <clears throat> and some are um, more, more compact. I certainly can speak from the chemistry perspective. All of the coursework is done in two months at the start of the year. In physics, I know it's, it tends to be spread out. Sorry, I don't know what the other ones are, but it, it's, not, it's very different, I think, to what you're currently experiencing as an undergraduate student. May I also add to that? Sure. Sorry, is this still on? Yes. Um, so the difference between undergrad, though, um, you'll essentially go in nine to five, work it as a job, but you can go home on the weekend and you won't have exams coming up. I mean, unless with things like coursework, you'll have your research to go back to. If you're completely self-organised, you can pretty well organise your time to not have to stress about exams coming up at the end of the semester. And honestly, I didn't even notice the semester breaks. I was so into my research <laughs> that it didn't even bother me. You do notice it because there's no queues at the hubs anymore for your That's lunch. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, can you apply for honours and then defer and travel and come back, or do you need to not apply and then apply the following year right. because the projects are different? So, yes, yeah, so we, we haven't spoken about the application process, um, but I think the, the short answer to your question is you can do honours at, at any point. So if you wanted to defer by a semester, you know, if, you're, if you didn't take your gap year, I don't like that phrase, but, you know, when you finished uh, year 12, before you started university, you could take a gap year or a gap semester now. So you can effectively apply at any time. What we do find if people who do have gaps is that they sort of get out in the world and they might earn a bit of money and that gets attractive to them and then they tend not to come back. So that does seem to be a, a bit of a trap that people can fall into. But certainly if you're dead keen and you want to go and see the Notre Dame now that it's been burnt down, um, then you can go and do that. So no limitation on when you can do honours. Thanks. Anyone else? Yep. Down here, Jenny. Not here. Do you put your put your hand up so Jenny can come. Yeah. Can we do honours part-time? Is that a thing you're allowed to do, or is it always just a full-time? Again, it depends on which area you do honours in. Uh, I know you're speaking from a chemi as a chemistry perspective. Um, so, yes, we can do... We have students who have done honours over three and four semesters. 
What I do not know, professional honours. Does anyone know whether that can be done part-time? Simon? <laughs> no reason why not. Yeah. I, I think that's a good question to ask when you do the, go to the breakout sessions. Yeah. Hey, one here, Jenny. <coughs> yeah, luckily, they're on that side, right? Come on, guys, you're being let down. <coughs> um, I just had a question about if you're already enrolled at a different uni in honours, how transferring occurs if you're interested in transferring for sort of that aspect. We have a wonderful team in the faculty office and they do, they somehow work out what the equivalent from another university is um, and absolutely transitioning from one university into honours at Adelaide is, is fine. So you just need to work through the faculty office. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So Thanks. no problem. Cool. Jenny, one way at the back on the other side, so. <coughs> That wasn't the question, though. Oh, was that your question about whether you, from another honours or another undergraduate degree? Yeah. Okay. Well, Simon's point was you can't trans transfer any of your project across. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering what the the major differences between the one year honours and the two year masters. Okay, so, <laughs> yes, I have not had anything about masters. So there is now a pathway where you can go directly from your third year, from three years undergraduate, uh, directly into masters. It's called MPhil No Honours. So that is an option available, um, I, I believe, is it in all discipline areas? That, I think it is. So yes, that's an option. And I would again suggest that you bring that up in your breakout sessions because there does seem to be a preference within each discipline area as to encourage you as to whether either do the honours or the MPhil pathway. But yes, it exists, that pathway. Yep. All right, I've been told that um, <clears throat> the pizzas have arrived, so that cuts off the, um, the uh, Q&A session. So what we're going to do now is we are going to break down...